Hey everyone, my name is Alan Thrall, and in this video, I finally get to talk about lifting weights and running. Well, not at the exact same time, but doing both as part of a weekly training routine. Believe it or not, you can do both. Running and lifting weights are often portrayed as polarizing activities. In the lifting community, running will zap your gains, skip the treadmill, hit the weights. Now this is not a video about why runners should lift weights. It's about lifters running and the contradictory nonsense that a lot of us lifters believe about running. And I include myself, I say us lifters, because I believed in all of it at some point too. In the lifting community, we like to share images of big jacked dudes and chicks and say, this is what happens when you lift weights. And then we'll share images of skinny runners and say, this is what you'll look like if you run. Cardio, weights, your choice. The truth is, you can lift weights every day for the rest of your life and never look like this, not even close. And most of you probably understand that. Well, the same goes for runners. You could run every day and still never look like this guy. And I'm not saying that disrespectfully to this guy. I just mean you might never have an ideal running physique, no matter how much you run. When non-lifters say, eh, I don't wanna lift weights because I don't wanna get too bulky. Lifters will laugh at this statement because they know you don't just get too jacked overnight. It actually takes a lot of work to get too muscular. But these same lifters think that going on a 20 minute jog two times per week will turn them into a greyhound race dog. Running doesn't make you skinny and weak. Not lifting weights and starving yourself makes you skinny and weak. Lifters also have this silly belief that running is just too stressful on the joints. My knees would explode. Let's look at this from a different perspective. What do you think to yourself when one of your family members or friend sees a video of you lifting weights and says, Alan, I don't know how you do those power dead pickups without throwing your back out. Alan, my back hurts just watching this. You better be careful with those weights, Alan, or you'll give yourself a prolapse. All of these misconceptions, fears, and beliefs that lifting weights is so dangerous and causes so many problems, it's enough to roll your eyes at, and I'm sure all of you lifters would agree. Well, guess what? That's exactly how you all sound when you talk about running, being bad for your knees, wear and tear on your joints, repeated pounding on your body. If running is bad for your knees, then squats are bad for your knees too. If running is wear and tear on your joints, then deadlifting is bad for your back. You see where I'm going with this? Stop fear-mongering, stop buying into the fear-mongering, stop demonizing exercise, and stop making up absolute claims about the harms of activity. That's all this really is. Lifting weights, running, riding a bike, swimming, it's all just physical activity. If we stop and think for a second about some of the stuff we believe, a lot of it doesn't make much sense. As lifters, we idolize this and strive to recreate it ourselves, but we think that doing this for 15 minutes is just too stressful. There's nothing wrong with either of these things. I think both are cool and I like doing both of them. You can run and lift weights as part of an exercise routine. Now you certainly don't have to run. You can swim, ride a bike, row, or do some other form of lower intensity cardio. But if you want to run and continue lifting weights, do it. I've been running recently because I enjoy running, but I also think that it's one of the best forms of cardio because anyone can do it. You don't need any equipment. It's scalable from a max effort sprint down to a fast walk. There are very few barriers preventing you from going on a run. I guess I couldn't say this if you live in Antarctica or the hood, but for most people, you can run anywhere, anytime. Now, we can talk a little bit about performance. Does running negatively impact my progress in the gym? It doesn't have to if you take the right approach. The interference effect is a reduction in the rate of your strength and hypertrophy gains when adding endurance training to a resistance program. Is this something you should be afraid of? According to Stronger by Science, the interference effect is getting less scary by the day. I will link the short article if you would like to read it, but it basically says that with regards to concurrent training, which is resistance training and endurance training, for strength development, there is no significant interference effect for untrained subjects, nor is there any interference effect when trained subjects split their endurance and resistance training into separate sessions. More from that article. 
It appears that the interference effect should only be a small concern for some people some of the time, and only in situations where they have to perform their endurance and resistance training in the same sessions. I doubt that many of you were doing 10 squats, running a half mile, then immediately doing another 10 squats, so this is probably nothing to worry about. Citing that article again, they found that concurrent training did not lead to significantly smaller strength gains than resistance training alone, nor did it lead to significantly less hypertrophy. However, concurrent training did lead to significantly smaller improvements, not zero, just smaller improvements in explosive strength than resistance training alone. So I guess if you're a shot putter, this should be considered. Still probably not a big deal. But if you're just trying to be Jack Diesel and you want to rep out 225 pounds in your rascal apparel stringer, you'll be fine. And I took a look at some of these studies to see what they considered endurance training. And honestly, these subjects were doing some pretty demanding runs. Five miles at 70% heart rate max, seven multiple sets of interval runs, strides and full speed runs, 30 to 500 meters at intensities of 85% of heart rate max, running 80 to 100% of maximum velocity at VO2 max, 15 to 20 60 second bouts with 45 to 90 second rest, continuous running for 20 to 30 minutes at 70 to 85% heart rate max, or sprint type interval consisting of 400, 800, 1200, and 1600 meter runs near maximal intensity with a one-to-one -one load rate to recover. These workouts sound pretty tough, a lot more demanding than what I started with. And even still, it says that the interference effect is not that concerning for most people. My personal running meta-analysis when I first started running looked like this. Running, no, jogging, no, not even. Shuffling continuously for like 15 to 20 minutes, 1.5 to two miles, two times per week. Pretty dang easy. The World Health Organization suggests 75 to 150 minutes of moderate physical activity per week. I'll give you three 30 minute weight training sessions and two 15 minute runs per week. Boom, that's 120 minutes of physical activity per week. Fits perfectly. Back to that rascal apparel stringer. Omar Isaf was part of a History Channel YouTube video about the Apache Warriors, and in that video, he had Mike Zordos as a guest to talk about the interference effect. So I tried to include the clip of Mike actually talking, but when I uploaded the video on YouTube, History Channel blocked that part of my video. A bit of an interference effect, if you will. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read what Mike says. I would still encourage you to go check out that video. Mike says, when we talk about the interference effect, we are talking about large amounts of aerobic training. The interference effect can be minimized. Now, if you go and do aerobic training a couple times per week for 30 minutes or less, it's probably not gonna have a big effect on your strength. It'll be good for cardiovascular health, it'll burn some calories, help you stay lean, and so forth. And that's a good adaptation. However, if you're out there and you're trying to train for a marathon and you're running really, really long distances while also trying to get bigger and stronger, you will improve cardiovascular fitness and you will improve strength and muscle growth, but that strength and muscle growth will be attenuated. It will be interfered with, not as good as it otherwise would be. So it depends upon the dosage of aerobic training and how the interference effect works by how much aerobic training you do to impact on strength. A lot and you'll have it. A little bit, your strength should be okay. This fits perfectly into what I would suggest for most lifters starting from scratch. And I am not a running coach, just going off of my own personal experience. Most of us who want to start doing a little bit of running along with our strength training routine only need one to two, 15 to 20 minute sessions per week, sometimes even less. Running, or more accurately jogging, is something that we can adapt to, just like you've adapted to regularly lifting weights. The key is to start slow, literally and figuratively. The added stress of running is not zero, so it needs to be accounted for in your overall training program. But like adding anything new, start small, light, and slow. Do something at or below what you can tolerate, and very slowly add intensity or volume, or neither of those. Don't add anything, just do the same thing over and over. Personally, I started with one and a half mile runs two times per week, very slow. And I told myself I wanted to do this for six weeks without increasing my pace at all. The same one and a half mile runs two times per week for six weeks. I ran the same distance at nearly the same pace and I quickly noticed the effort that it took to do this dropped. I would finish some of these runs and laugh to myself when I look at how slow the pace was. But I was not in a rush at all. And instead of being concerned with adding mileage every week or decreasing my time, I just enjoyed the feeling of these short runs getting easier and easier. 
Now you don't need to do exactly what I did, but I will add that when I started running, I was very active and I spent a lot of time on my feet every day. I averaged 20,000 steps per day. So turning three to 4,000 of those steps into jogging wasn't that stressful for me. It was pretty easy to tolerate. There's 5,280 feet in a mile, so I'm guessing around half that in jogging steps. If you are sedentary and you're only getting, let's say 3,000 steps per day, adding in another 3,000 running steps might be too much too soon. So this is all something to consider. Be honest with yourself about your starting point. I wanna be clear that I'm making this video and a couple more videos about lifting and running to encourage you to go on a run and lift weights if that's something you want to do. I'm not saying you need to run. I'm not saying it will never affect your weight training routine. I wouldn't prescribe running to a power lifter unless they really wanted to run. And I would probably discourage them from running if they were preparing for a powerlifting meet. I'm talking to those of you who lift weights and you would like to get out on a trail and go for a jog. Maybe you used to love running, but the lifting community has convinced you that running is bad. A gains zapper. I'm gonna close out with some tough love. Maybe you should stop holding on so tightly to your very average gym numbers. If running is your preferred way to do cardio, and it has a small negative effect on your top end strength. It's okay, nobody will know. Maybe running helps you lose some weight by being more active. Personally, I think that that's more important than whether or not your squat is 275 pounds or 295 pounds. In the next video, I will reveal my current top secret program. Thanks for watching and always remember, tread on time. I forgot to mention, there are two Instagram accounts of runners who lift weights that I follow and I think that they put out a lot of good content. Mark Bottenhorn and I recently found Jeremy Miller. I really like his videos. Anyways, they're runners who lift weights. So I pick up a lot of tips from them with regards to running mainly because I'm new to it. So check them out.